Hi everyone, how are you doing? At this time of year, I like to go through and organize my bookshelves and to look at all the books that I've acquired over the past year and then try to prioritize which books I want to read before the end of the year. And, uh, and as you can see behind me, there's a lot of books um, that, that I have and that I've been wanting to get to. And these are just the ones that I, I really want to read and that I'm very interested in reading. And, and I keep coming across, I'll come across a book and be like, oh yeah, I remember getting this and I really want to read it because it sounds interesting. Uh, but then, you know, then there's a dozen more right behind it. And so it's really difficult to figure out what to prioritize. And so I really value your opinion at this time of year uh, to figure out what I want to read in December uh, before the new year. And uh, so like last year, a lot of people encouraged me to read Tara Westover's Educated. And, uh, and I'm so glad that I did read that memoir because it was really powerful. A really upsetting story, but a very poignant one. Uh, so I'm going to go through a lot of the books that um, I'm most interested in reading and hoping that uh, some people will have read them and can give me suggestions or pointers on what you think I should prioritize out of out of all these books. And usually at this time, I do a bit of a freak out because I'm, I'm like, oh no, I can't read everything before the end of the year. But I, I've i decided that, that I'm just going to be more chill about this in, you know, positive mental attitude and uh, and I'll just read what I can and that'll be totally fine because obviously I'm not gonna read all of these books I think sometimes as readers we can put too much pressure on ourselves to, to try to read everything um, when obviously that's not possible so I've broken these down into different categories and I'm gonna show a, a number from each category that I'm, I'm really interested in reading next so first off there is poetry and I found that I've really enjoyed reading a lot more poetry in in the past few months. And uh, there's a number of titles that have uh, come up for book awards recently um, that sound really good. So there's Raymond Atrebus's uh, The Perseverance, um, which has been nominated for a number of awards this year. And uh, a few people have already commented, prompted me to get to it. There's also Mary Jean Chan's collection uh, called Flesh and uh, Reckless Paper Birds by John McCullough. And, uh, and he's an author that I've read a number of times before and I really enjoy his poetry. And actually, both Flesh and Reckless Paper Birds have uh, just been shortlisted for the Costa Book Awards poetry category. Then I have a number of essay collections uh, that I've been wanting to get to and it feels like this has really been the year of the essays. There are a number of essay collections which have been really prominent in the media and a lot of people have been talking about them and, uh, and one of those is Trick Mirror by Gia Cholentino and this has gotten almost unanimous praise uh, but I have seen some more uh, critical reactions to, to this book recently. There's a collection of essays called It's Not About the Burqa, edited by Miriam Khan, uh, which is a collection of a lot of different authors uh, responding to this issue of, of how Muslim women seem to be portrayed as, as only one type of person. When obviously there's a whole diversity of opinions and points of view of Muslim women in the UK. There's an essay collection by the Irish writer Kevin Braithnack, and, uh, and he writes about a whole range of subjects uh, from photography uh, to post-adolescent relationships and Sally Rooney says that he is one of the most interesting writers working in Ireland today. There's also a number of short story collections I've been wanting to get to but I keep coming across this issue in when I read collections uh, that I'll get to a short story which I don't enjoy as much and that sort of stops me and will put me off the collection as a whole when I know I should just sort of move on from that and read the rest of the stories in that collection. So there's Jamie Quattro's stories, I want to show you more, and I really enjoyed her novel Fire Sermon, so um, I'd be really curious to read more of her fiction. There's Julia Armfield's Salt Slow, uh, which are stories about women and their bodies, and uh, and I think this has been shortlisted for the uh, Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year Award. There's also Yukiko Motoya's uh, Picnic in the Storm, and I think this was called The Lonesome Bodybuilder in the US when it was published there. And I have a number of books of fiction in translation and I've been really trying to actively read more fiction in translation this year. Um, so there are a bunch which uh, sound really good. So there's To Leave with the Reindeer by Olivia Rosenthal and I've heard that this is a really wild book and um, a really different kind of narrative and story and um, so I'm so curious to, to try it. There's Things That Fall from the Sky by Celia Ahaba and uh, this is about uh, three people whose lives are, are 
are changed by random events. And I just love the cover of this novel. And then there's a new book uh, called Agatha by Anne Catherine Bauman. And this has just been published. And it sounds like a really interesting story about the relationship between a woman and her psychiatrist in 1940s Paris. I have some new editions of classic fiction or, uh, or 20th century fiction, which has been republished. Uh, so there is The Artificial Silk Girl by Imagard Kuhn. And, uh, and this is set in Berlin uh, in, I think, the mid 20th century. And I heard from Sean the Book Maniac that this is also a very funny book. Then I have a number of books by Thomas Bernhard, who was an author in the 20th century that was born in the Netherlands but raised and lived a lot of his life in Austria and uh, he wrote a number of books which won uh, German and European prizes and I've never read him before but I know that Lucy Elman is a big fan of his so I'm, I'm really curious to try some of his fiction. Then there's a novel that I've been wanting to read for ages and Vintage Editions just brought out this really beautiful new edition of it. It's uh, the Makioka Sisters by Junishiro Tanizaki and, uh, and I I've been wanting to read this for so long because Edmund White is a really big fan of this novel and it's one that I think would be really lovely to read over the winter months. And speaking of Lucy Elman, there are also a number of big books that I've been wanting to get to and one really interesting sounding new one is called The Catholic School by Eduardo Albanati and, uh, and this is uh, about a group of young men uh, in 1970s Italy um, during a sort of neo-fascist movement. They really drawn to reading this but, but I'm a bit nervous because I know it would probably take up my whole winter to get through it because it's 1,268 pages long. I could probably do a workout um, lifting this book while also reading it. There are also a number of debut novels that I think sound really interesting and I always get really excited finding new voices and, and new authors to read. There's He Is Mine and I Have No Other by Rebecca O'Connor, a new Irish author. Asghar and Zara by Samir Rahim. This is a novel about a young couple from a Muslim background living in modern day London and the, the pressures and the struggles that they have uh, getting married. Then there's some nonfiction and autobiographies uh, and I've been finding that I've been reading a lot more memoirs and biographies this year. Um, so one book is Mama's Boy by Dustin Lance Black and, I, uh, and he's a, a screenwriter and he writes about his relationship with his mother and political struggles in modern day America. There's Afropean by Johnny Pitts and I've heard so many good things about this book. Um, he sort of explores the lives of a number of different uh, people from African descent living in different European cities. Surrender by Joanna Pocock and she writes about her experiences living in the Midwest of America for a couple of years and her relationship with the environment during that time. And then there are a whole big group of novels that I've been wanting to get to. So this is a big mixture of some are authors I've read before and so I want to read their new work or their, um, their, their authors I've been wanting to and meaning to read for a very long time but just haven't got to. And then of course there are just a number of books that really superficially I, I really like the look of the covers of them or, or there's something about the, the premise of these novels that really intrigues me and makes me want to read them. So there's Everything You Ever Wanted by Louis Louisa Sama and I really enjoyed her, her first novel and I love the sound of the premise of this new novel. So it's about uh, people who want to escape the daily grind of everyday life when they get an opportunity to go into outer space. Clothesline Swing by Ahmed Dani Ramadan and this is a novel about two lovers and their, their journey from living in Syria uh, to moving to Lebanon and Turkey and to Egypt and finally making a way to to Canada. Beyond the Sea by Paul Lynch. This is another really exciting new Irish author and, uh, and he, he writes about uh, two sailors who are cast adrift out in the Pacific Ocean. A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. She writes about the, the lives of different women during the, the Greek and Trojan Wars and uh, if you remember Anna James was a big fan of this novel so it's been one I've really been wanting to get to. There's also Todd Nahissi Coates a debut novel The Water Dancer and if you like everybody's been reading and talking about this novel. I mean it's on an Oprah's book club book and uh, and yeah it's become really popular so I've, I'm really curious to read it myself. So those are some of the books that I, I really want to get to and that I, I've been sort of eyeing up uh, but of course there are a 
are a lot more that I'm interested in. Uh, and even if I read a book a day for the rest of the year, I still wouldn't get through all of these. Uh, so I'd be really interested in your opinion. If any stand out to you um, that sound the most interesting, or if you've read any of them and would really recommend them, let me know your thoughts in the, the comments below. I always have this feeling that, that the books I read at the end of the year um, should really be some of the best books of the year. And ones I should catch up on, you know, after reading all these, these best end of the year lists. So let me know some of your favorites from the year uh, that you think I should get to and that you think I would really enjoy with, you know, my own reading tastes. And let me know what you're planning to read before the end of the year as well. Uh, so hope you're doing well and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.